When I got my private pilot license, I dreamed of my wife and kids eagerly jumping in the airplane and setting off on dozens of adventures flying around the country. Well, as we started to venture out on trips, we've had some good times, but also some rough ones. The girls all seemed to struggle with nauseousness or headaches or fatigue while flying. Over time, they became less enthusiastic about flying. I chalked it up to general motion sickness. But after a trip last summer to Bend, Oregon, I had a realization. On that trip, we were trapped above a wildfire smoke layer at 11,000 feet, and the girls were really not doing well. I'm really not feeling good. I don't think I can do big plane trips like this. It's really awful. My wife was in really bad shape. I thought I don't feel sick, but I feel heavy and numb. I decided to measure her blood oxygen level with a pulse oximeter, and it was really low. It's really bad. Could lack of oxygen be the cause for all their discomfort? Can I turn around their reluctance to fly and start living the dream again? Well, today we're gonna find out on a flight from LA to Sedona. Let's go flying. Sky Rat and I really struggle when we go to Mammoth the first day. I think that uh, altitude really gets us. I did tons of research and ended up buying the Mountain High Portable Pulse Demand Oxygen System in hopes that it would remedy some of their symptoms. Last time we flew to Sedona, last year we had the gusty winds there, but on the way you didn't feel well either, thinking no, back, I, did I kind not. of forgot about that. I threw up when we got there. Nauseousness has definitely played a factor. I always just felt so heavy and tired. I just got like really lightheaded and really nauseous. Overall, like crazy, I just really was not thinking well. I definitely feel like dull headache by the end of the flight. You definitely could feel like a little bit worn. Feel the like, yeah, like you're worn a little yeah. bit. I think the reason why the girls were feeling so bad was the medical condition known as hypoxia, which is essentially lack of oxygen to the body's tissues. To oversimplify the science, the higher you fly, the less oxygen is available in the air for your body. This lack of oxygen can lead to symptoms such as headache, confusion, impaired judgment, drowsiness, unconsciousness, and in more severe cases, life-threatening consequences. In aviation, hypoxia is known as the insidious killer because it's often accompanied by a feeling of euphoria, so those who are experiencing it don't necessarily recognize it. It's been responsible for many fatal airplane accidents, which is why the FAA mandates oxygen use above 12,500 feet if longer than 30 minutes and any time over 14,000 feet. To combat this, we have supplemental oxygen systems. I'm excited to see if this really does make that big of a difference. Most general aviation planes like mine don't have built-in oxygen, but we can get portable setups like this mountain high pulse demand system. It consists of an oxygen cylinder that holds compressed oxygen, a pressure regulator that reduces and controls constant pressure, a flow control device that delivers precise oxygen flow, and a mask or cannula that delivers the oxygen into your nose. We open the oxygen valve on the tank and then we put it in our nose and then we just have to turn it on on the box the first click, okay? This particular four-person system from Mountain High has two EDS pulse demand devices that deliver a puff of oxygen only when a user inhales. Ah, oh, whoa. As you breathe in, it'll give you the required oxygen. Oh, my eyes are watering. <laughs> I think you just have to get used to it. Yeah. At first, it was like, it was kind of weird. Like, it was uh, distracting to me when it was like pulsing. Yeah, it was kind of like, I didn't expect it. Like, every time I breathe in, it like, now I kind of barely notice it. Full disclosure before I get into more of the features here. I bought this system from Mountain High and while they did give me a slight discount, all the opinions expressed in this video are my own. And Mountain High won't see this video before it's published. They did not sponsor this video, but this video does have a sponsor, which is NordVPN. Along with Patreon members, sponsors like NordVPN are what make this content possible. And I'm a big fan of their VPN service. If you watch this channel, you know we take safety and security seriously. And that extends beyond flying and into our everyday lives, especially our cybersecurity and personal data. We're always flying to cool new destinations, traveling through FBOs, hotels, Airbnbs, and airport terminals, and using public Wi-Fi networks at all of these places. These networks are vulnerable to hackers. And that's why I use NordVPN to protect my family. It encrypts traffic with just one click and blocks phishing websites. It keeps our passwords and personal information safe wherever we are. Another awesome benefit of NordVPN is that we can get access to services and shows 
not normally available in certain countries. So when we travel out of the country, we can still access services like Netflix and Hulu. Go to nordvpn.com slash flying monkey to get a two year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. It's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. So we've been at 9,500 feet for quite a while, at least, say at least half an hour. The advantage of this pulse demand system over more rudimentary flow meters is that the short puffs of the oxygen it puts out really save on oxygen use. This O2D2 box also measures pressure altitude and breathing patterns and adjusts oxygen delivery. The length of the oxygen puff that you receive is automatically adjusted based on the pressure altitude. So the higher you go, the more oxygen you get. And um, I got the pulse oximeter here and you can see that um, my pulse ox right now is 94. By only delivering oxygen when you breathe in, the pulse demand method can make a tank of oxygen last much longer than constant flow devices. For example, the 48 cubic foot tank I have would last a whopping 83 hours for a single user. Many pilots don't even fly that much in a year. It's enough for about 20 hours of flying if all four of us are on oxygen, which is just about four of our usual family trips. 94 is really good. I would probably normally see 90 or maybe in like the upper 80s with the density altitude here at 10,500, so uh, yeah, this is awesome. The O2-D2 has some clever selectable modes for oxygen delivery. The end mode for immediate delivery of oxygen over the duration of the entire flight, useful for night flying. The D5 and D10 modes that will automatically start oxygen flow at 5,000 and 10,000 foot pressure altitudes respectively and four F modes for higher oxygen amounts when using a face mask or if you just feel like you need more. All right, so we've been flying for at least an hour at 9,500. You're on the oxygen and looks like you've got uh, in the mid 90s on your pulse ox, which is awesome. You must be having a good time and being you're excited because your pulse is a little fast. <laughs> It also features a flow fault alarm to let you know if there's a problem with the oxygen flow and an apnea alarm that automatically adjusts its criteria for sounding based on pressure altitude and will let you know if a user is not breathing within a certain time interval. Seem to be doing pretty well right now. Are you feeling okay? Yep, I don't have that wheezy feeling that I sometimes get. Mountain High also offers these clever boom cannulas which easily mount on your aviation headset with firm but removable sticky pads. It makes it super easy to swing the cannula down when you need it and away when you don't. You don't have to wrestle with tubing around your neck and over your ears. I don't feel nauseous at all. This is all like, it's a pretty big game changer for me. That's awesome. That's amazing. That, I'm so glad to hear it because the whole goal with this is to make flying more fun and safer and everything. How are you feeling? Good. A lot better than I think I'd normally be. Yeah? You don't feel nauseous and stuff? Oh, no, not at all. Dude, that's so Message. awesome. Yeah. It makes me so happy. This is awesome that this is working for you and I'm stoked and it's like, you know, it's definitely money well spent on this because sure. if it makes you guys enjoy flying more and makes you feel better, then, you know, um, you know, the whole experience is better. That's what, that's the whole idea of like getting in the airplane together. It's, it's about the experience of it and like the sights and like everything to do with aviation. So like we want to improve that. This is part of it, which is really cool. It's really cool. I really like all the clever features of the Pulse Demand system. Mostly the set it and forget it aspect of the Pulse Demand. Just open the cylinder valve before takeoff, select the mode, and let the O2D2 figure out the rest. There's no fussing around with settings in flight or worrying about adjusting oxygen flow as you climb higher. You can do everything on the ground so it's easy and safe. A nice detail is that all the tubing is really easy to connect with a simple action of pushing the tube into the receptacle. The other thing I love is that it uses much less oxygen than a constant flow setup, and that means less worrying about having to refill the tank in the middle of a trip, which means more flexibility on where we can land since we're not worrying about finding an FBO that can fill the tank at a remote location. It also means less frequent times of having to pull the tank in and out of the plane. I cannot believe how I feel right now. Yeah. Really, but I'm not dying to get out of the airplane. Like, I'm, I'm good. After using this oxygen system on a couple trips with my family, I'm super stoked with the results. It's been a real game changer for us and the girls are way more excited to fly again. I definitely recommend this for all pilots, even beyond those who are flying where oxygen's required. 
If you're looking to feel better when you fly or you want your passengers to feel great when you land, then oxygen can help make it happen. Let me know in the comments below what your experience has been with aviation oxygen. If you enjoyed this video, please support this creative project by joining our amazing Patreon community, where you'll get benefits like access to our Discord chat server, exclusive bonus content, monthly Zoom hangouts, merch discounts, and the awesome feeling of knowing you're supporting our efforts to create the best aviation content on the internet. Until next time, thanks for coming along on the journey with me.